basketball. Yeah, thanks, Sal. Uh, men's team, unfortunately, you know, uh, bowed out a little early uh, for the tournament, but they had another great year. Uh, two years in a row, over 20 wins. They were second in the league. I think that's the first time in, I mean, I'm talking 50 years or more, the men's team's done that. So, you know, Coach Calhoun did a great job again. And uh, so the, the big league was packed for uh, most of the season, the home games. So, uh, you know, in the world of transfer portal and NIL, they got to find about seven new guys. So I'm sure he'll do that. So, but definitely a shout out to uh, Coach Calhoun and the men's team. Yeah, as the tournaments go on, NIT and NCAA, uh, we definitely thought we would be there again as we hosted the NIT last year. Um, very disappointed after a phenomenal season, just just like that in the game of basketball. You lose one game. I think it was the Cleveland State season over. Uh, but like Dan said, we will rebound like we've had um, with Coach uh, Calhoun anyway. Uh, Curdy, Instagram, how is it looking this week? Uh, yeah, last couple of days, uh, Instagram has been heating heating up. Um, before we send it over to Coach Cop for introductions, I just we have a guy on today, Coach. You know, Tim Johnson. He was a you know coach while we were there, and and a player for for many years. Um, it's just the Instagram feedback for us has been top notch, only because we have guys who have reached out wanting to ask Tim questions before Tim played. And we've had guys reach out that Tim's probably coached and have played two decades after Tim has played. So, you know, the influence that Tim has had on this program um, and, and, you know, my personal career and Searle's personal career and, you know, you guys as coaches, like this influence from this guy and, and coach, I know you'll give him a proper introduction just by social media. The last two days has, has really proven itself. And we look forward to hearing more from you today, Tim. So thanks for coming, man. Thanks for having me. Thanks for having me. Well, before we dive into the introduction, um, I know we're getting there, I swear, guys. Um, <laughs> I want to hand it over to Cyril to give a, a special thank you out there. Yeah. Uh, before before I get into this, thank you, Sal. Um, we are not on YouTube Live, so I don't know if you can switch that on um, on your end. But, uh, guys, we we got some, some great news. Um from the Leiden family, uh, we all decided to get some advertising at the stadium to really grow this show throughout our first season, um, talking about the Penguins. And we expected nothing from it. We just were going to go all in. I mentioned uh, it to Paul and Laura Leiden if they wanted to help out with our advertising um, bill that came due. And they picked up 100% of it. And we, we can't thank them enough. And we've talked about them on the show uh, a few times. Just avid supporters of, of Penguin football, Penguin sports, and the university as a whole. And, uh, you know, any, every little bit helps us. We, we don't make any money on this. We're not, you know, podcasters like Pat McAfee. You know, <laughs> we just do it to promote Youngstown State football and because we love the program that much. So, once again... Just thank you to the Leiden family, Paul, Laura, Paul Jr., and and Jennifer over there. Thank you, Cyril. Well, let's get in it. Flip it over to Dan to give the uh, formal introduction. Thank you. Uh, real quick, before I get into that, um, Kyle, want to speak for all of us to thank the Leiden family. You know, we saw the Kyle and I spent a little time with Paul and Laura at the Penguin of the Year banquet where Tim was standing as we were all hanging out before Ellen and Jim uh, Tressel were introduced. So big thanks to the Leiden family. They're huge to our community and huge to the university. So let me get to it because it's a big honor to introduce our guest tonight. I mean, he looks like he can still play up there. I mean, look at him. He looks like he's ready to go. I, I love it. But I guarantee he can still play. No doubt. No, no doubt. No Especially doubt. with the cupcakes that are on the field in today's game. For sure. For sure. So, uh, like I said, it's an honor to introduce, arguably, you know, maybe the best linebacker that's ever played at YSU. And uh, I'm going to go over some quick stats. And I, we talked about this before we came on the air. And before, so I want everyone to brace themselves for this, that the stats we're going to talk about for Tim, who played in 27 games at YSU 
from 99 and 2000, those two seasons. This, these stats are for 27 games, just so put that in your mind. He totaled 401 tackles, 401 tackles. That's 14.8 tackles per game. I'm no mathematician, but that's, that's pretty sick. <laughs> uh, and in those 27 games, he had 24 tackles for loss, six sacks, 10 interceptions, 10 interceptions, 14 pass breakups, and five forced fumbles at his linebacker position in 27 games. His 2000 season, senior year, consensus first team All-American. This was awarded by the AP, AFCA, Football Gazette, Walter Camp Foundation, the Sports Network. He was a finalist for the Buck Buchanan Award, the best defensive player at the FCS level. Then after this, again, 27 games, he did this him. Played in the NFL from 03 to 06 with the Bears, Raiders, and Ravens. Then he goes, when he's with the Raiders, plays in Super Bowl 37, blocks a punt, wearing number 51. I can still remember. You reach out there with that right hand, blocks the punt, which led to Raiders scoring a touchdown against your Bucks, Sal, against your Tampa Bay Bucks. Uh, so, I mean, I just want you to kind of wrap your head around that, our listeners, especially current players. Um, watching this guy play when he wore number 45 in the red and white was incredible. And we're going to ask him some questions about this later. But And then his time when he was working in the strength department as one of our coaches when Kurt and Kyle were playing and Sal and I were around, it was just a joy to have him there. And his energy is infectious. Um, Kyle nailed it. He can line up and spring ball right now and probably get 14 tackles in, in the spring game. There's no doubt. So really, Tim, it's an honor, man. Thanks for coming on. This is just really cool to have you on. You're a legend, um, a legendary player at YSU, an even better guy. So, yeah. So I hope I did you some justice with some of those stats because they're crazy to think about. 401 tackles. And I mean, just – Crazy, Tim. So uh, tenacious guy. So thanks for being on, man. Thank you. Oh, it's an honor. It's an honor. Dan, I appreciate you, man. I really do. Kyle, Kurt, Sal, I appreciate you guys for the work you're doing. And uh, getting this podcast started is much needed. Uh, kind of think I remember you guys launching, what, late la or sometime mid last year. And it's like, wow, that's going to be great. And so welcome and, you know, keep doing the great work you're doing. Thanks for having me. You got it. And I think, Sal, you mentioned we're going to give Tim a little spot there. Go ahead. Yeah. Well, just update us real quick, Tim, on on uh, today, what, what what you've been up to, what life's like currently for you. Man, first, I want to give, you know, all honor and all glory, all of that. I want to get after God and worship my God and my Savior, uh, who is gracious and mercy enough, merciful enough to allow me these great opportunities in this wonderful journey. So uh, I would be uh, be bad if I didn't mention that. So, uh, but right now just learning like logistics industry, I've been fortunate uh, to get you know, my family, taking care of my family, uh, out here working in the steel industry, trying to find out you know, what's going on with logistics, hauling steel in US, US steel, um, just learning the game of logistics with the Corolla family, uh, learning how to, uh, you know, do business. And uh, it's been a blessing to uh, get with the family and learn the business and, and get saturated and learning what uh, steel hauling is all about. Also been pushing my uh, brilliant brain crown helmet with hip md and uh wanting to get this anti-concussion movement underway get the helmet get my brain crown helmet made and and just you know everything we can do to you know push forward as an entrepreneur and businessman and uh, taking care of my family my beautiful family and four kids nice and uh, just for everyone on the youtube live chat i did post the link to that and i pinned that uh, so you could find the website that Tim is uh, uh, referring to. Uh, as Dan said, you, you did play in that Super Bowl uh, against my Bucks. I am a born and raised Tampa native. So when I was in sixth grade, uh, I was fortunate enough. My dad actually flew me out to San Diego and we were at that game. So mm -hmm. we were at the same place, the same time. I was just up in the stands and the, uh, 
probably the fourth to last row and you were on the field, <laughs> but I was there. And uh, my first question, it's all relevant. Um, in San Diego, I, well, first, let me just, I, I just got a side note. Um, and, and this is, I don't think I've ever said this out loud. Only my father knows this. I had a Derek Brooks jersey, but as wild and crazy as the Raiders were having a Super Bowl in California, I had my Jerry Rice Raiders jersey underneath in case like things went sideways. I wanted to get out of there alive. I was only in sixth grade and these I've seen some crazy fans. Raiders fans of the Super Bowl were nuts. I've seen nothing like it. I was stressed out and I was just a fan. So I guess my first question is that Super Bowl, what was the feeling leading up to the big game and playing that Super Bowl and, and being in that Super Bowl for you? It was amazing. Uh, it was just a lifetime dream come true. Something we dreamed about as a kid and growing up. And I remember making a bet with my barber and his brother at the time at their home. And we were, I was getting a haircut and I go, look, you know, a thousand dollars to the first person playing the Super Bowl. And we must, I must have been, I don't know, 14, 15. And it's like, okay. And uh, you, you get to, I get to that moment in life and, made it that far and you pull up in San Diego, you got the drop top Bentley Azures, you got all of the, you know, tickets, you got your family that, I mean, the, the, the fanfare around not leaving the state, uh, playing for a world championship at that level uh, was amazing. Representing my hometown, Fairfield, Alabama, and representing, you know, Youngstown State having come in and uh, even the, the training camps that I went to with, you know, Baltimore, uh, Chicago Bears, and then finally getting to Oakland, I had, you know, guys proud of me, you know, having left and made something out of it. So uh, that game was amazing. You know, you play for championships. I went to Youngstown State to play for a national championship, and I was always about winning championships and, uh, you know, making it to that championship game uh, it was amazing. And uh, we made some, we made some big plays. We made some noises, you know, as a player and, uh, you know, didn't come out on top, but you know, I ended up getting 10 grand from Jerry Rice as the special teams player of the year after getting act activated after the 11th, uh, 11th game, week 11, I got active and some kind of way in six weeks, a first round by for, you know, divisional round, AFC Championship and Super Bowl, some kind of way between nine games, I got the 10 grand from JR uh, and from Baller. Uh, that was the that was the highlight of my year. And then after the after the game, Al Davis says, "Hey Tim, go do the post game interview." And it's like, okay, you know. So you know, it was a great experience for me and my family and my football career. Absolutely, that game was. Uh... Well, it was nuts. Just I think there was only five percent Bucks fans and ninety five. It was like a home game. So anyway, uh, it was Dan, over to you. Yeah, Tim. Question for you. You spoke about coming to YSU to play for championships, but I'm curious. I'm sure a bunch of our listeners are too. Is talk about your recruitment to YSU. You know, legend has it, K Dog recruited you. I, I don't know if that's the the deal but give us a little insight on how you ended up at YSU and what that was like here's a here's something I took from K-Dog oh man this was in his in, in his garage I did a clean out for him cleaned out his garage this is old you know picture here somebody drew of him uh, I, it. I also found this old ab wheel in there <laughs> put some miles on this joker here too thanks KC <laughs> keeping the abs tight um, um. Yeah, yeah. I, like I say, left Fairfield High School, which, again, we celebrating 2024 5A state basketball champs right now, 2024, you know, Fairfield. But left Fairfield High School, went to University of West Alabama, D2, full ride, meal ticket, got out of mama house and uh, got there. True freshman, balled out, found out I wanted to play at a higher level at a bigger school, wanted a bigger, uh, you know, scholarship, transferred to East Mississippi Junior College, which back then with no portal, had to sit out a year if you transfer it up to D1, went to JUCO, spent the, spent the semester there, a year there playing you know football my sophomore year. And uh, KC did come down and recruit me from an East Mississippi Junior College All-Star game over in uh, Northeast uh, Mississippi. So he drove in, uh, watched me play, 
Coach S.C. Sullins at East Mississippi told him to watch me, and he did. And, you know, he, you know I guess what he ended up coming to my mom's house first, driving his, his brother's Cadillac or something like that down. I don't know, some old car he drove down, came in my mom's house, my dad's house, like, yo, want to get this kid. And so my mom was like, he always talked about how my mom talked about she got to pray for it, got to pray about it, I mean, see if he can go. But I uh, ended up making this, I made a decision. Again, I made a decision to transfer from D2 to East Mississippi. I made a decision to go to Youngstown State over everybody. So uh, KC did a great job recruiting, got me up and met Tress, shook Tress' hand, and I guess that sealed the deal. Uh, they found a scholarship for me. Word is they didn't have any left but one. So uh, hopefully I, I see how that worked out. But uh, KC, my man, you know, wouldn't, wouldn't be here right now. My life would be totally different without the man. Love he and his wife, Miss Carol, and uh, been, it's been it's just been amazing uh, having still having Casey in my life. You know, that that's cool. I you know we all know uh, most of us know Coach Casey Ken Kanatzer, and love that guy. So I just wanted to confirm that and kind of hear your side of that. And I'm glad they had that one scholarship left. I I don't know who who else was on the hook to get that, but man, you want to talk about a a life changing. You know who that other guy was? He was probably yeah. He's I don't he know. But. He had a, he bought another D tackle from East, East Mississippi with me up there. I don't know who they wanted, but when I shook Tress' hand and got a chance to meet Tress, you know people think Tress is the big recruiter, you know. But you know I get Tress is due, but KC, uh, you know Hall of Fame coach KC won the Hall last February. I'm you know proud of being a part of the Penguin family. Awesome. That's a perfect segue into uh, Cyril's question. Go ahead, Cyril. Yeah, absolutely, Tim. You you alluded to it. Um, Youngstown is definitely a special place to all of us. Uh, I'm sure we all went there to win a national championship or compete for a championship. Um, just over the the course of you know your career playing football and and retiring and things like that, uh, especially when Kurt and I were there. You, you always seem to be back in Youngstown. You're, you are from Alabama. Um, it seems like you can do what you're doing uh, pretty much anywhere in the country, but you chose to come back to Youngstown. And, uh, you know, so I, I just want to say that's awesome of you. Uh, but what keeps drawing you back to this area? And because um, I know you've been involved with the program on a, a coaching basis. Um I just I remember specifically one time we came in for a 6 a.m. one morning and uh, we, we met on the field and you are at the top of the stadium and it's like 545, 550. You come sprinting down the, the steps, drenched in sweat. You've probably been there for a good solid hour, already just getting your work in. But, um, you know, what keeps you coming back and – what prompted you to get involved with the youth sports end of it? Because I know Kurt and I have also helped you with some of your youth sports camps hosted at the the Watson Trestle Center. And, uh, and, and I guess that's kind of what prompted you into hit football. So kind of talk on that a little bit as well. Okay. Well, again, when I left home and took flight and went on my first U.S. Air flight to Pittsburgh to get to Youngstown, uh, I made that decision based upon being from an Alabama guy, Alabama Crimson Tide guy, born and raised, and then wanting to play that brand and style of football after the Cornelius Bennett's, after the Gene Stallings and all of the players and coaches that came through there. It, you know, it was, it was all about I wanted to play the highest and the best championship brand of football. And when I looked at Youngstown, I looked at the University of Alabama, I said, you know what? This brand of football, this style of you know, three yards in a cloud of dust, the seriousness of this game, how passionate the university and players and coaches are about winning. I said, this is the closest thing in Alabama I'm going to get. And that's, that's I look at Youngstown State as the University of Alabama to me. And so I play the game with a Crimson Tide Alabama mindset, although I see with the wide and the Youngstown State on, that's what you got for me. Uh, as far as just coming back and forth, I was always told by Coach Tressel and Coach Canassa to get my degree. So not finishing my degree in 01, and when I went to the Ravens, 
Uh, it just always was something we talked about over the years. You know, Tress keeping up, KC, get that degree, get that degree. So I ended up going back to school to get my degree on campus in 2013, 2014. That's where I met you all. Uh, and that was the biggest decision I made. And uh, walking across that stage, and then the day that I walked across the stage to get my degree in 14, uh, President Tressel, that was his first day as president of the university. <laughs> so I walked across the stage, ran up in the stands, took a selfie, oh, Tress, oh, and, and that made it so much like amazing and worthwhile to go back and stay, bring my family back to Youngstown, stay on campus, get in the community. And that's where my camps started with running for fun and. Just piggybacked off of that, wanted to do an all-star game, Tim Johnson all-star games annually and helping the youth get visual, get seen. And it just became fun. I love the game, man. My passion for the game has driven me around the world. But when I got to Youngstown and you're 45 minutes away from the NFL Hall of Fame, <laughs> I also realized that's the closest you're going to get to the NFL Hall of Fame, Tim. So hang around Youngstown. <laughs> <laughs> so... Uh, but the community, the people, uh, I love the people, love, love the community, love the support that we have there. And, you know, after the tackle football all-star games, I was starting to get worried about kids getting hurt in the last week of the season in November, December. I said, no. After 2016, I said, I want to put some education into the game. And that's where hip and head impact prevention came in to teach the kids how we do it in the NFL, walk through, jog through, sprint through mental reps, attention and we changed the helmet took the face mask off soft shell helmet and we became students and so uh that kept me going then we did four years of hip football all-star games now kids are just not hurting themselves and staying healthy so just a movement that we created and then i guess i went to germany lived with my family and kids were over there living and coaching for Dusseldorf panther and next thing you know the nfl helmet challenge comes to youngstown state university in 2019 that brought me back uh, by the grace of my family, allowed me this opportunity to come back here and build something and, and build on our legacy here. Uh, it, it was amazing. So helmet challenge left in 19 and, and 20 and just rolled on and got back with coach Phillips. So it's just, I love the university and, you know, my love and passion for football drives me and community and people and family that drives me. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, this uh, this university certainly drives the, the community surrounding it and, and vice versa. So absolutely awesome, Tim. Uh, Tim, you briefly mentioned Coach Trussell. And uh, unfortunately, I only knew President Trussell. And I, as any regular listener of this show knows that I swear upon uh, Coach Haycock, which I again, I only knew head coach. John Haycock, briefly defensive coordinator, um, but mostly as a head coach. Your senior year, Haycock came onto the staff. Uh, I guess my question for you is, what was Coach Trussell like and in, in, as a coach and Coach Haycock before he had the gray hairs? What was he like before, <laughs> before he got all the gray hairs from being a head coach? You had two – Juggernaut, two geniuses, I believe, where you got Tress doing his thing on offense, defense and special teams. You got Haycock over here on defense doing his thing and what he can do with special teams and his his players. And you would get the slow and steady grind of run, 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 punt, run, run, first down, run, pass, run, run, up, back up, punt, to play defense because they would give it back to one another. Hey, didn't get a first down, punt, punt, and you call the defense out. And so Coach Haycock and Coach Tucker, they come back, defensive plan. So saw a lot of back and forth to win games, uh, but we trusted one another. Offense trusted defense, defense trusted offense, and we leaned on special teams to win and close close games for us. So you saw a little bit of ebb and flow there, but it was all about winning and those guys, Coach Tress, Coach Haycock, Coach Tuck, Coach Casey, the whole staff, just the team and the orientation of it, it was just an amazing, amazing dynamic, I say. And you see Coach Haycock running the world with his defensive schemes and all his blitzes and fronts. And that's, 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 a, we, we, we were part of that. And so, 
you know, it was it was, and, and we won. We went 21 and six in those 27 games with two of those games. Well, one being a playoff game and one being a national championship game of those six losses. The other two were nine and two seasons, both seasons. So uh, we did what we could do to go out and win a national championship. Haycock, I mean, as you say, he was like, a, he still is. He's like a mad scientist when it comes to defense. Just the way he looks at the game. It's so, it's both advanced and it's so simple. I, I still remember, um, He'd pause the film on and and he'd stare at it, the screen. And I'd be like, "What the hell is he looking at?" And then he'd say, "You see a problem with this, Sal? No, I don't, I, the ball isn't even snapped yet." <laughs> and he'd draw a line down the middle, and he says, "You, you see a problem yet?" I go, "No." And he'd count. Boop, boop, boop. You got seven on this side of the football, and you got four people on this side of the football. I don't want to have to hit play. Where do you think the offense is going? <laughs> not just like it's so simple, but so genius. And of course, he hits play, and they run it to the four man side for 20, 30 yards. But uh, yeah, I, I'm glad he's doing great things over at Iowa State. Uh, he was yeah, really a fiery, a fiery, fiery coach. Made sure guys yeah. were fired up. And Coach Haycock used to always say, "Hey, this game is played by people and for people." Mm-hmm. And how much? About privilege it is to for us to be able to do it that's right uh dk well that, that's a, a great point there tim thanks kind of leads me to my question 1999 play home playoff game against florida a&m and i remember i was working here in town why you grad i was at the game packed the ice castle was packed you made the play that uh, sealed the win so why you could go to the 99 title game you made this interception. And I mean, it. I could still see it just being up in the seats. People were going crazy. You made this play. It was just, it's incredible. All these years later, I literally can still picture it. So kind of tell us a little bit about that play. I know there's probably a little story behind it more than just you making the play, but uh, give us a little insight. I know there's a lot of people don't want to hear about that, that play. Hmm. Uh, well, the way I remember it, it was like, you know, 24 to 13 or something like that with seven something to go. And uh, I kind of remember looking back at the clock. It was a TV timeout. Our backs were against the big scoreboard up on the north end. And uh, it was third and four, something like that. It was definitely third and four. And uh, it was a TV timeout. And I just remember the band playing. And I remember this guy over in the, the – we were lined up just not – you know, in our stances, waiting on the TV time out the end. And I'm noticing this wide receiver in the boundary and he's dancing and I'm just standing there and I'm just, he's dancing. The band up there playing, the, what, fam, you bought about 50 or 800 people. They up there playing, womp, 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 womp. That trick there, shut up, womp. I'm sitting there like I'm from the South, so they pumping me up and they don't even know. And I'm just like, man. I'm saying he dancing, you can't, man, you better not, man, you dancing, okay. And I just, he was in, it was like trips into the boundary, it was three by one into the boundary during the TV timeout. But then when they came back out after the TV timeout, he motioned to two by two. And when he went in motion, I bumped to the new three. And when I bumped, I had seen it before. I think they were like seven to seven for that drive, drive and pass, and seven for seven. And I said, if they run the ball, they're going to kick a field goal. I said, but here come the slant. When he went in motion, I said, here come the slant. And, I mean, quarterback threw it, and there it was. And, man, yeah, Tress always talk about how you got caught from behind. And, <laughs> but the guy had an angle on me, you know. So uh, we made the play. It, it was never giving up. And, you know, uh, we were conditioned to, you know, <clears throat> Seize that moment. Coach Stoops like to say, oh, you was out of position on that play. <laughs> but Yeah, you were out of his position, but you were in position to make the pick. So, yeah, it was uh, – Yeah, no, nah, it, it, it was a must win. Had to have it. Why did they pass? They were trying to put the dagger in our in – our, put the stake in and drive us home. And they threw the ball. I picked it, and the rest is history. But uh, the guys did their job. Everybody did. Everybody came back and won. But 
what the way we were conditioned to go out and win games, I never quit, never thought about quitting. 24-13, we go back and win the games to 27-24. So uh, just never quit, never give up. And uh, you, 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 you win the majority of those games when everyone believes. Yeah, I, I, I was at that game, like I said, that these other three guys on, on, the, on the, the cast here, Tim, they're all young, man. They, they, they were young back then. You know, okay. I'm, I'm the old guy here, but I remember it like it was yesterday when you made that pick. The Guys, the, the castle went crazy. Like people were throwing cups. You know, back then you couldn't get beer in the stadium. So it was Youngstown. Guys had flasks of booze and, you know, it was it, the place went absolutely crazy when he made that pick. So thanks for sharing that because I always want a little bit of insight on that. So, yeah, uh, yep. No it's over to you, Kyle. Yep. Yeah. Uh, that It's it's so funny that like I I had a feeling that you were going to give us like your memory of it, but just that you can remember the band, the dancing, the song. And it's like Kurt and I will have conversations from when we were playing and break it down to the last detail and it's just so funny how the certain things stick with you. And it's always fun talking to uh, uh, an exceptional football player when you're talking about football versus like people that watch it. Because a majority of the people have no idea what you meant when you said I bumped over to the new three. Mm -hmm. But just, you know, it, it's, <laughs> you know, when Kurt and I were leaving the Villanova game, you were, you, you broke down all four quarters on like all the adjustments that like we should have been in. And it's just, it's just funny. But um, my question is we've talked about this a, a few times on the show and obviously the game has evolved in, in many different ways over decades and generations of players and things like that. Um, sometimes for the, for the good, sometimes n not for the good. And I kind of want to get your opinion on, you know, today's, mentality versus when you were playing and you were in college specifically guys mentality coming out of high school, like the recruiting process and um, just the, I'm going to say loyalty to teams. Cause I think that the NIL and uh, my personal opinion is I, I see benefits to the NIL and transfer portal. Uh, but my opinion is that it's being extremely abused. So I just kind of want to get your thoughts on it. Okay, well, I, don't know. I I just think of the game now. First of all, I played in one of the, at the end towards one of the most violent eras uh, to end all in the in the in that era. Uh, nowadays, we don't hit how we used to hit when we tackle. So you can tackle somebody. But the ferocity and the fierceness and the violence that we used to run and hit people, it doesn't exist in that form anymore. So, you know, I don't think people really feel it, but having played it, uh, the game is totally different. Changes the, changes the game totally of how it's played, changes the athlete totally of how they prepare. And, uh, you know, when I was in high school, we were to break the defensive huddle. It was base, base, dog team, hit somebody, kill somebody. Great. Yeah, that's Fairfield High School. Base, base, dog team, hit somebody, kill somebody. And so that was the mentality, you know. But uh, nowadays, and I started college on a financial aid package for, for one year. It, or it was a four-year scholarship, but that was around the time they started pushing it back, saying, okay, this is a one-year renewable. Okay, now now with the portal, scholarships are one semester. You know, ain't even a whole year of financial aid. It's you sit for one semester, you gone. You know, you you know, I was talking to Tress a little earlier. It's like, yeah, Alabama losing all their players. Coach, don't nobody want to sit there and wait to play for four years no more. Not when I don't have and you gonna give me money to leave. So I like the NIL because we had a kid like Bryce Oliver who was on one of my NIL kids. And to see him going pro and getting ready to run for the pros next week, you know, and to see Bryce stay in Youngstown and not go to the next school for the money, it says that there's a bit of value in relationships still. That 
money can move a lot of people, but some people, money, you know, all money ain't good money. And in that situation, Bryce stayed at Youngstown with lesser money. He played for us, played his heart out, and he's going to have a chance to go to the next level next week. So it's just about saying, and, and I get to support him. I get to come in and watch him grow as a kid, support him through college. And I follow him because I'm saying he's going to go pro. Let me get on him now and then support him all the way through. So I get to support Bryce through his training, through now and through life. That's the importance of NIL and someone helping these kids is don't just go give them money, invest and pour the seed in them and then follow them and then continue to support them throughout life. And so I think it's two schools of thought. I'll give you money for right now, wham, bam, thank you. Or you know what? This is for longevity. And I think Bryce made the right move with keeping his relationships intact, keeping his responsibilities intact. And then now let's go and make some some real money. The real money. Don't take the cheese. Yeah. Don't jump and bite up on the, but sit back, believe and trust in your skills, a set skill set and ability. And then you go make the money that you're supposed to make. You know. Yeah, that's that's awesome. And, and so, I know uh, y- you played for a coach, you played for Trestle, and he and we started with Haycock, and, and they were both uh, leaders of men. They cared about where we went after we were done playing. I think that um, it, it's kind of hard to um, have that when you're bouncing around from being a mercenary for, you know, the, the next big check. So I just – that's a great way to put it. Yeah. Uh, before I ask my question, I'm going to give uh, Curtis a chance to hop on in here. Hey, Tim, uh, shifting gears a little bit. I know, you, I mean, that's an honestly a, a super serious conversation that we'd want to hear a lot more about. And I, I love your opinion on that, man, for sure. Um, but it sounds like the statistics that Coach Cop gave a little bit earlier might be a little inflated because it sounds like I heard from an anonymous source that Coach Tucker actually gave you one extra tackle because he included your senior tackle. Can you talk a little bit about that? Senior tackle. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. I don't no, know. No. Nothing, I don't know nothing about what nobody gave me. I don't know. <laughs> nothing, all I know is it's written in the history books. That's all I read. All right. All right. All right. I can't. I cannot confirm nor deny if that was a former teammate or yours or not. So that was yeah, my question there. Yeah, yeah, Kurt. Just remember this: not all people can throw the ball like you spin it. Now, okay? <laughs> <laughs> sounds like you know who's talking to you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> all right, appreciate um, it, Tim. <laughs> one question, Tim, that I, I love asking all alumni this question, um, and I hope you got something prepared for us: funny or serious, on or off the field. Whether it's a crazy night out in college or as a student or something on the field, just give us, you know, one or two of uh, your favorite Youngstown State stories to tell. Mm. Uh, you know, I think of one, and I'm going to set this up. This is an alley oop for him. But uh, I don't know. We stayed up, the, 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 the out, of, out of state guys would stay up in Youngstown over the summer or something like that. And it seemed like, we were training in that, and the way I remember it, we were shooting basketball in the gym, all of us, you know, running you know, five on five, and it was 15 plus guys in there. So we up in we up in the, in the gym running, and uh, I got hot. You know, it was me probably it was probably the me and the Florida boys versus everybody else. All my all my roommates was from Florida, so we got out on the court and we were just running and. I got hot. Oh man, I went to cook. So I hit one. Russell Stubbs checking me. Came down, hit another one. Uh, Russell on me. I came down and made about seven, eight, maybe even nine. I made all of the baskets. Russell hot. Russell hot. So everybody like, ooh, you know, everybody hyping it. Oh, he on fire. He on fire. Russell can't stop. And at some point, Russell was like frustrated. And right then, I came up on him and I was like, I played like I was going to hit him because I'm a bomb first. If you want to fight me, it's like, okay. So I went, ha, ha, ha. and I said, I had you right there. And everybody, like, oh, yeah. And so Russell wanted to fight. I'm like, man, listen, I'm not about to fight you, man. <laughs> I'm not about to fight you, man. Uh, you know, and that was, you know, n- you know, 
Yeah, he was like, oh, come on, come on. I was like, bro, I'm, we, we're not about to fight, man. I, and so I think, <laughs> yeah, little stuff like that where you you could blow it all and just, you know, with a team, you, you lose it all and lose all of everything. Just, yeah. you know, I mean, you look at how he turned out and how our careers turned out. I laugh when I see that picture on his Facebook, on our Instagram and stuff with the Pittsburgh and Raiders. Our picture, I look at it and I go, man. I'm glad I didn't ever really land that punch, you know, just playing around. <laughs> so that's one. That's one I remember, uh, you know. But, yeah, we had a lot of fun. And uh, another thing, too, our culture, you know, leaving the South and uh, getting in the locker room full of guys who, at that time, I'm learning Italian. You know, you down in the South, it's black or white. It's like, yeah, but wait a minute. I got to Youngstown and got my Italian brothers, my, you know, all my different brothers and brotherhood. And I had to learn that. And, you know, we had a tight locker room. You know, we could make jokes. We could have fun. with no sensitivity. And we learned a lot from each other and, and created a real brotherhood. And I, I, I'm, it's, it's irreplaceable. I'm pretty sure us in this chat and uh, probably the current players, we could all kind of relate to some uh, off-season basketball games um, <laughs> whether it was three-point challenge or uh, it's just, I think it's just what we did. Even the coaches, we that's what we did in the, the spring. Right before spring ball, we would all go upstairs and play basketball. Um, Kurt, Kurt chipped three. three of my teeth playing pool basketball. I had to go get those bad boys fixed. <laughs> And I, you know, obviously I couldn't, I couldn't, you know, drowned our quarterback. So I was like, <laughs> I still wasn't allowed to get touched even in the pool. Yeah. <laughs> Talk about keeping your cool. Jeez. Uh, Curdy, let you get another one in here. Hey, Tim, if you don't mind, man, I, I'm just going to pick your brain a little bit because I know you're passionate, you know, about sports. And I, I really think, you know, like myself and you, like you kind of have to learn that value of education. Uh, being a fifth grade teacher right now in Columbus, man, I just, I hope that I can show this uh, to a couple of my boys that I have in fifth grade right now, man. Just, what would you say to fifth graders right now or, or middle schoolers who are convinced that they're going to D1 and they're convinced that they're professional athletes? What would you tell them that they have to do? Because what I tell them clearly is not going in their head sometimes. But like coming from you, it might mean a little bit more. And, and those kids who are just – like you know, like you said before, that this is the dream. This is what everybody, every kid who dreams of, you know, what does it take to actually get there? I would say it's about three rules that I lived by, and that's don't take any days off. Uh, you say that, but the day that you take off is the day that the next guy somewhere in the world is competing to beat you and take your job and be better than you. And so I, I taken off and cutting corners, I would run around the field, but I wouldn't cut in front of the pylon. I would run all the way around each pylon to make sure I didn't cut any corners. You know, a coach said get dips after practice. I did the dips, you know, 20, like, Anything extra I could do, run around the mall, put my helmet on in the summer, run around with my helmet on to simulate heat and getting hot, practicing like just running, just training. But, I, you know, again, I just never took a break and didn't take off those days mm -hmm. off. Mm -hmm. And I would say if you want to go D1, you can and you probably will. But the key, one of the things that I did is I just didn't say nothing. Once you do the work, it's no time to talk. For sure. Uh, when you're busy working, you don't have time to tell somebody what you're about to do. Mm -hmm. So I was just one of the guys that once I, me and my mom, we prayed, she, son, you think you can play in the NFL? I said, yes, ma'am. She said, boy, you got to stop running with these boys, these other guys these, in 10th grade. I said, yes, ma'am. We prayed to prayer of faith. And I said, yes, I believe I can go to the league. She said, are you really serious? I said, yes, ma'am. She said, let's pray. We prayed. And from that moment on, I didn't doubt one thing about my ability, where I would end up. It didn't matter. But I knew if I worked that my faith, my dedication, 
and that my and 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 not taking days off would be the reason why I would make it. And so I'm fortunate. And then a lot of more other things went into play. Why I thank God that it just wasn't me being great. It wasn't just me being the guy. It's faith, belief in myself, mm-hmm. work on top of the faith and work. And then the only thing you get from faith and work is results. So go for your dreams. Go be the best you can be. You'll go anywhere you want to go and even further sometimes when you set your goals right. But you got to write your goals down. You got to write them on your wall. My roommates knew my goals because they would see them walking out of the house or walking out of the room because I wrote them on my wall. So that was one way to hit a 10 interception, uh, see a five interception season. Cause I put 10 picks on the goal and got five. I got mm-hmm. you know 200 tackles, but I put 150, you know, it, it's all about set your goals and write them down. And, but then don't say nothing about your goals, just enact them and execute them. And then all you'll be doing, you'll be sitting up there on draft. They said, I'm not surprised. I'm number one overall. Right. Right. And so, it's just, that's all it is. It's just, but that that has to be ingrained in you. No yeah. coach, no player, no friend can come along. Mama, daddy can come along and tell you that and put that in you. You have to find that from within you. No doubt, no doubt. I appreciate that, man. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Well, it's been sort of a quiet night on YouTube Live, and there's one thing that I think we learned as a uh, podcasters is we, we probably shouldn't record on opening night of March Madness. Uh, so. <laughs> <laughs> we learned that the hard way. Uh, shout out to Richard Wolf. He's definitely with us, though. Uh, Curdy, any Instagram questions uh, you may have for, for Tim or anything on Instagram? You know, Tim, I think you answered most of them. Uh, Rich did text earlier just talking a little bit more about playing in the NFL. I know you mentioned the Super Bowl, but I don't know. Real quick, what was it like just, you know, being a professional athlete? Hey, coming from where I came from in Fairfield and, you know, West Alabama and East Mississippi and Youngstown, you know, I had to focus in. I couldn't miss a practice. I couldn't uh, get frustrated for getting cut. I had to shake hands, walk out of the building. And I learned the business of the NFL as a rookie when I went in on hard knocks and got cut and I shook his hand. I shook everybody's hand and walked out like a man. They called me back. A day or two later and said, come back. We want to sign you for week one. Made up the day roster because learning the business, shaking hands, looking people in the eye, walking out of the door, let the door hit you. And then you come back and you go in and out of the Ravens facility, in and out of Chicago facility, in and out of the Raiders facility. But it's a pride and a, and a, and a, and a humility that comes with it that says, you know what? I asked God to take me to the NFL. I didn't ask to be first round draft pick, number one overall. I didn't ask to be a multi I didn't ask to get in the Hall of Fame. So I went to the league and I learned the league and the league's business and how to do business. And so as a pro athlete, I learned from the best to do it. I learned from the owners and the best players in the, in the world that, that they ever did it. I learned and I soaked up the game and now you know, we're able to, you know, kind of move and help the game as much as we can move forward and grow the sport. Well, Tim, as a uh, uh, really a fellow out of stater, I, I especially got to say thank you for everything you've done for Youngstown State football. It's, it's awesome. Um, I want to give you a – you got something, Dan? Real quick, I, I, if you know, I got to ask Tim a little bit about I don't know if it was on Hard Knocks or we were talking about it maybe a month ago. Your imitation of, um, oh my gosh, the tight end. Shannon Sharp. Shannon Shan- Sharp. Yeah. Shannon it was Sharp. on Hard Knocks. <laughs> it was on Hard Knocks. You know, I don't know whether you could recreate that for us right now or maybe you could do a little Ray Lewis for us because you, I mean, you played with two Hall of Famers there. Obviously, you know, the, I think one of the games Ray was out, you started and had like 20 tackles against my Steelers. Yeah. That one game. I was watching. I'm like, okay, we got a chance. Ray Lewis is out. No, and no, no, no. Just blowing the world up, you know. No, I never replaced Ray. Ray never got hurt. That's one thing. He stayed healthy when I got there. He, yeah. He said, oh, I'm going to stay healthy. <laughs> but no, nah, he, uh, no, nah, Shannon. They're all good guys. Like I say, they were asking us to either sing our alma mater, sing our fight song, sing something. I'm like, I'm not singing nothing. And so, <laughs> yeah, it was like, 
what you gonna do? I'm like, I'm gonna do something. I'll just, I have family. We always acting crazy. So I always had an uncle, a friend, family always talk like that. So when I did that, it was just like, <laughs> oh my God. And so it was a moment of truth. Again, you're gonna be a kid. You're gonna shrink in the moment. You're gonna make the team or you're gonna like, what you gonna do? And it was just lights, camera, action. Cameras were following us around the whole time. So yeah. for me, it was just like, being at the house after dinner, just having fun with the guys. You make it. You with the NFL MVP with Ray Lewis, with the Super Bowl champion, 35 champions in, in Baltimore. You, this is your welcome to the league and you're on national TV. And that thing been running for 25 years. Yeah. You know, yeah. so you know, I don't really like to talk like Shay a lot because you know, he, 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 yeah, you don't know what. He, yeah, he just. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. I love it. But yeah, no, I, I just, you know, was just seeing you in that light and knowing you and it was cool to see a Youngstown guy, you know, doing that. And I wanted to pre uh, thank you for what you said about, I think our listeners, the current players should hear what you said about learning the business of the NFL, being a man about, Hey, it didn't work out, but you're going to go to the next team and here they call you right back. So mm -hmm. just appreciate you being on man. And no. We all love you, man. It's just man, great. Man, I love you all too, man. Thanks for having me, man. Like I said, I'm I'm just, you know, chipping away. Keep chipping away and we'll keep making something happen, man. But um there's some interesting things coming. I got uh the US Department of State interested in coming in into the university, seeing the uh excellence training center and uh learning about trades and things we got going to the university and stuff. So uh wanted to learn more about hip and hip helmets and anything we're doing to save the game and make it safer. So some interesting things coming up this year. Uh, we're excited about them all and uh, looking forward to what, what, what the future holds for. So um, what I had, I had a couple of things. One little quote from Coach Trussell, he said, you can't win a championship in the spring, but you can lose it if you're not prepared enough. If you're not prepared enough, if you don't, get ready and do it right, you, you, you can lose it, you know? So, uh, yeah, they always say, you, can, you can't win a championship in the spring, but you can lose it if you don't prepare right, if you don't prepare enough. I'm misquoting it, but it's like, and then Miss Ellen is like, her one of her quotes is, uh, yeah, on your best day, be great. And then on your worst day, be good. And every other day get better. Mm. So, two couple of quotes you think about and you, you go up, you go to work about, and you know it's just you know those are my couple of my favorite people and university is just uh, just beautiful. And happy to meet new president Bill Johnson and all of that. So, like I say, man, I'm, I got to get back up there, kind of check out Bryce for pro day and see what's going on. Absolutely, and just one more thing, Tim, just. Uh, I think some of the players listen to the show. Uh, any last words for those guys going into uh, really in the spring ball here and in, in, uh, into the 2024 season? Well, we turned the corner in the playoffs last year. I mean, that was huge. Coach Phillips did a great job getting us in there. Uh, the players did a great job, you know, following through, getting that big win out there in the first round. And so I think we took the step we needed to take to go to the next level. Um, like I said, I want to get up and watch practice, see how the new guys look, any transfers and all that. But when you put that Y on and you put that helmet on, just know that the world is watching. Just know that Youngstown has a really huge platform in the sports and football world, even from an FCS perspective. We have a great history. We have great results from our history and the people the people that help put everything together in Youngstown are the most important. So when you put that wire on and that stadium gets filled with 20,000 plus fans, like we set the record when I was there, it's all about the why and nothing else, no names on the jerseys, but the names on the front. And so just keep representing the city, keep representing the, 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 the team and the community university, and we'll be successful. We're looking for another championship soon. Number five, Championship number five, the one that eluded us in 99, we still looking for championship number five. Let's get it. Let's get it. Love it. Uh, Kurt, do you have anything before we're done? Yeah, Tim, I think we got one more guest caller who'd like to ask you a question, if you don't mind, man. Okay. Kurt, thanks for uh, letting me call in. So, uh, Tim, I'm a big fan of yours. 
probably one of the best uh, linebackers we've had at YSU. But, uh, you know, I'd agree with you. You alluded that fifth one. If you would have had a quarterback like Kurt Tess, uh, you might have won it. But, uh, exactly. You know, that FAMU game, I just want to know, you know, what was uh, – Cop didn't say anything about your 40 time, but how did you get walked down after that interception? It, the guy had an angle on me. You know, Florida guy, fast. I intercepted it over here. He came off the backside hash. And caught. again, I just had to take the ball and get the ball to people who could get the job done, like my quarterback, my offensive coordinator. And they came through. They did. They, I had to let them make their money. So, <laughs> you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Good answer. Good answer. One of the best YSU players there, Timmy. We love you, man. So, no, we love you too. Thank you, guys. We appreciate it. But, uh, you've been a great ball player, and you represent Youngstown great. So, no, uh, thank call you. Call in because uh, Kirk has did throw a better ball. So, <laughs> so, yeah, that guy definitely had an angle on you, Tim. Where I was sitting, I, I was up high. And that guy, I mean, he had the, you know, the pursuit drill. Remember he used to do the pursuit drill? Yeah. This guy from FAMU, he had such an angle on you. I mean, there was there was no way. I mean, you know. Kirk, for the listeners, who, who was that that called in? Tim, who was that? I don't remember. I don't remember. When I looked up, when I got up, I saw 21,000 fans. <laughs> and I was like, okay, we got a shot. And, you know. Jeff threw a lucky ball. We called a lucky ball. <laughs> it's like it was all. It was just all. Just it was all. It was all good, man. We yeah, had, that's fellow fellow YSU QB Jeff Ryan with the call in. Yeah. 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 That was a good way to, to close it out. But uh, thank you again, everyone. Uh, Tim Johnson, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Tim. Let's transition. Well, wrapping up the show, uh, again, we are doing shows, and we'd love to interview legends like we had Tim Johnson, uh, had Tim and Alvy on before that. Uh, it's, it's really been a great offseason, and, and the reality of these things is these are, these are timeless uh, episodes that we're recording. This Tim Johnson episode, you can listen to it five years from now, and it, it's still going to be relevant and great information. Uh, as opposed to more of our in-season episodes are kind of outdated afterward. So please, we'd love to have more guests on, whether you're listening or know someone that's listening. Uh, reach out to, on our Instagram, right Town Penguin Podcast, uh, to become a guest. And we'd love to get you on while we're on the off-season. Um, but again, we will be recording. Follow that Instagram. We'll let you know when we're recording next this off-season so you can follow us and watch on YouTube live. Uh, Real quick before I close it out officially, anything else from uh, Cyril, Kurt, Dan? All set, man. Yes. Appreciate it, Tim. Yeah. No, thanks, guys. Wait, wait. Kyle got something, right? S sorry, sorry, guys. Um, uh, our next guest, I believe, is Matt Hogg. He is the president of the YSU football alumni um, group here, and he's doing a, a fantastic job of it, yes, just sir. keeping us connected and, and because Kurt and I have talked about this over the years there there was no there there was no system there was nothing in place and there's no one reaching out to anybody to to try and organize anything uh, so Matt Hogg is going to be on we are going to promote the the YSU men's golf outing in May um, I am already registered so any of those alumni listening Hope to see you guys there. I would love to d dive in and meet some of these guys. I know I met Russell Stufant's like briefly for like 30 seconds, but like going to be time to have conversation with guys and hear their stories like Tim's because honestly, we could do a show every night with some of the legends that came, came through the program. Um, so just guys, if you're an alumni football player, just really make it a point to um, – get involved and get connected because it's it's a special group of guys and i just really wanted to put an emphasis on that um kind of get everyone prepped for matt hogg coming on he's gonna have a lot more to share mm -hmm. and uh so i believe i i believe the 2024 to 2025 men's football alumni um membership is open i'm not quite sure where to access that yet because you know just google it and mm -hmm. you might be able to find it so um, just wanted to once again thank our listeners and our fans because uh, we really do it for you guys and um, just to promote Youngstown State football. 
Love that, Cyril. To your point, uh, when we have Matt Hogg on, he will definitely give all the details that uh, any of us are fuzzy on. So we'll, we'll know how to get the uh, football alumni back together uh, and on the same page. But uh, again, we are on Instagram, White Town Penguin Podcast. Please follow that, and we will be on YouTube live. And as Cyril mentioned, Matt Hogg will be on the next show. Uh, thank you again, Tim. But Thanks, we Tim. are the Youngstown Thanks, Penguin, football, yeah. Penguin Football Thanks, Podcast. Tim. That's Kyle Cyril. That's Kurt Hess. That's Dan Kopp. That is Tim Johnson. I'm Sal Guardo signing off. And as always, go Penguins. Go Penguins.